the VHF versus UHF videos have brought a ton of awesome discussion and just an incredible amount of knowledge sharing in the comments section. And I just want to say thank you for that. I seriously love it. The idea behind this channel is to supplement the physical training components of ranch strategies by having an outlet to expand on the topics we focus in on in our training courses or just the topics that we're most passionate about. Of course, comms and radios being one of them. So one of the biggest things that was brought up was in reference to the fact that the antenna we used in the last two comparisons, the one for VHF, wasn't a quarter wave antenna. So it really wasn't a fair wavelength comparison between the two bands just due to the resonance or lack thereof for that antenna. Actually, you know what? Let's stop and talk about that for a second. The comments section went a little bit crazy in regards to the size of the OEM antennas we were using on the last two tests that we did, specifically the ones we were using on VHF. And a common statement that was made was basically if we had done a better job of having an equal setup between VHF and UHF in reference to the lengths of those antennas, it would have been a much better comparison. What all of these comments were pointing out was that for our radios to be the most efficient that they can be, we want to have an antenna that's resonant. And all that means is that we want the length of our antenna to be a quarter of a wavelength. By doing this, the antenna would be essentially purely resistive and its reactance would be zero. This would allow for the maximum amount of current flowing through the antenna. So based on their size, the OEM antennas were pretty much a quarter of a wavelength on UHF, but a far cry on VHF. But this begs the question, how would you even determine what the wavelength should be? So there is an equation you can do to figure out the length of your antenna. And what that is, is 468 divided by your frequency, megahertz. Then you divide that by 2, multiply that answer by 12, and that will equal your quarter wavelength. The little Greek lambda symbol is what you use for wavelength. In our purposes here for this case, we want to do 468 divided by the frequency that we're on. So we'll say 146 for our VHF frequency, and that's going to equal 3.205. When you divide that by 2, we get an answer of 1.60. Now we need to multiply that by 12, and that gives us our 19.25 inch length for our antenna to have a quarter wavelength. Now, quick sidebar here. If you're wondering where this magic number 468 comes from this is like a ham radio magical number if you do the math a half wavelength should come actually come out to 492 divided by your frequency so the math here really doesn't add up the common explanation is out there is that our radio wave travels about five percent slower through wire than it does in free space so the distance that a radio wave would travel in a wire, it's about 5% less than it would travel in free space. And that's where the 468 comes from. Okay, let's get back to the test. Now that that's out of the way, we have our radios back with us. We're gonna do some UHF only radios as well as some VHF only radios. We did one bring two that are dual band, so we'll test both of those. The antenna that we're gonna use is the Diamond 77CA. It's a quarter wave antenna on VHF. And we'll put that in comparison to the UHF antennas that are with us as well. Now that that's cleared up, also want to point out a quarter wave for the UHF band we're on measures in using the same formula at 6.10 inches. So we have those established. We have our UHF radios. We have our VHF radios with a quarter wavelength antenna for that as well. We're going to start at our half mile, then go to three quarter, then go to one mile locations. We always use the same locations to do these testings. But we're going to do it a little bit differently this time where I'm going to call out all the radios in a row so you can see this and then play all the audios next to each other so you can kind of have a side-by-side -side compar comparison of the audio quality. So with that, we'll start with our XCS 5000. Testing half mile range UHF 
XTS 5000, testing one, two, three, four, five. From there, let's go to an XTS 2500, testing half mile range, UHF, XTS 2500, testing one, two, three, four, five. Just in the front of things, I figured we'd bust out the Sabre as well. <whistles> testing half mile range, this will be on the Sabre, UHF still, testing one, two, three, four, five. If you remember our budget UHF winning radio, the Allianz HD1. Testing on the HD1, half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five, still on UHF. And then if you remember, the other budget comm we said we like to use is the Belfine 1701. So we're gonna do that on analog UHF and then switch to VHF as well. So testing on the Belfine. 1701, half mile range, testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing half mile range, switch XTS 5000, testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing half mile range, UHF, XTS 2500, testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing half mile range. This will be on the Sabre, UHF still. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing on the HD1, half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Still on UHF. Testing on the Balfang. 1701, half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Now let's check out all the VHF radios. So the first radio we're going to start out with is our Motorola Apex 7000 on VHF analog. Testing on analog, VHF, Apex 7000, testing one, two, three, four, five. From there, so with the same VHF antenna, we're going to do an HT1000. Testing on VHF, the HT1000, testing one, two, three, four, five, half mile range. Okay. Now for the HD1, again, with the Diamond 77CA. Testing on VHF, on the HD1 half mile range, testing one, two, three, four, five. Now let's see how the Balfang does. Testing VHF on the 1701 half mile range, testing one, two, three, four, five. Three quarters of a mile we go. If you're looking around and you're kind of like, hey, that area looks a little bit familiar, at this point, it should. Uh, every single test that we've done, we come to the exact same spot. That's why I wear this GPS. I have all of the spots laid out so that we come to the exact same location and do the test at the exact same spot so it's the exact same distance for each test. Okay, here we are, three quarters of a mile, XTS 5000 on UHF. Now for the 2500. Okay, now for our Sabre 3, our HD1. And then finally, we got our Bofang 1701. VHF on the Apex 7000. All right, we'll see what our HD1000 does. VHF on the HD1, and then our Balfang. So here we are again, and once again, the UHF has outperformed VHF in these tests. I tried to give VHF its fair chance by putting a quarter wavelength antenna, which you know UH, the UHF radios were essentially operating on. And I just have to chalk it up to the fact that we're at peak foliage. It is very dense back there, and that two meter wavelength just can't get out past those trees. I will admit, all of the signals were degraded. It was pretty wild to see none of the radios getting out past the half mile mark. However, when we're using that half mile point to do the comparison, the UHF was still able to punch two. VHF didn't have one radio that made it to the receiver. So this is just one of those things that kind of solidifies the deal for us when it comes to woodland operations. UHF is going to be our go-to. And even a little bit crazier is 
despite the terrain advantages we gave this test as we go out. You know, the radios were able to hit the receiver at the half mile mark, but that is our lowest terrain point. And you can see that on the terrain maps that are attached. The three quarters of a mile and the one mile is a steady increase in elevation as we go. So that was a little shocking to see. We're not done with this. We are gonna do a little bit more with this VHF, UHF testing. We're gonna do this over flat terrain. And again, we're gonna take this out on the water and test it over the water and see who comes out the winner. One thing I want to hit on before we go, as I was watching the videos of the results and kind of editing and putting this together, looking at all the hiking that we're doing, I have to say, so as a, as a 41 year old, I am certainly in above average health. And that is in by no means a coincidence. I work my butt off to maintain that. I just want to say for anybody else that is in public safety, that's trying to do the prepared citizen thing, kudos to you. We have to understand the biggest, baddest tool in your arsenal is you. Your body is going to be your primary for everything and essentially your last line of defense against anything and everything. So it's important to maintain that. Now, this is in no way a paid endorsement for anything I do on this channel. Nothing is provided for me. Nothing is an endorsement. But if you're doing some self-reflection and you realize, hey, I'm probably not in the shape that I should be and I really want to take it seriously and get some help in getting me to that point. There is a personal trainer who the company is under the name Seek Adversity PT. The dude is in law enforcement. He's in public safety. He's a former Marine. So he understands shift work, family, all the stressors that come along with it and trying to figure out your time constraints in there. If you've come to the realization, hey, this is something I want to improve myself on, we're actually going to be doing some, I want to call it a collaboration but just kind of incorporating a little bit more of that, especially since we have a professional who's willing to kind of take us in and give us some good points along the way. So we're gonna make a little journey out of that as well. So I hope you stay tuned for that. And again, if you're looking for that, go seek him out. That's it for today. Please do the like, subscribe, and share thing. We have a ton of content in the queue, up on the whiteboard, information we wanna share, and ultimately, I enjoy making these videos. So cool, yeah, we'll see you for that. Oh, anything you want to elaborate on in regards to this video, the previous videos, please do it in the comment. I think on the last two videos, I've responded to virtually every comment that was made. And if I didn't respond to you, it was not on purpose. I just must have overlooked it or it got lost. I love the information sharing. I know they said it in the beginning, but just wanted to reiterate it. Okay, we're done for real this time. <laughs>